access high-speed broadband. So the government's confirmed it wants to introduce a universal service obligation for broadband. Everyone will have a legal right to a basic broadband connection, as in Switzerland, Finland and Spain. But despite the Digital Economy Bill announcement, there remains concerns about how broadband might roll out to the last 20% of Brits in rural areas who don't have it. And crucially, who will foot the bill? So I've come to a famously disconnected place, a small village called Staylittle in rural Wales. Now this is the kind of place you come for a digital detox. There is no broadband here and, as is so often the case, there's also no mobile phone signal. We're a minority really, aren't we? So we're just, you know, the forgotten few really. Broadband is sort of something you take for granted and you go somewhere else. Not having broadband internet can knock up to 20% off the value of your property, it's thought. And aware of that, locals have long been unsuccessfully crying out to get on the grid. Well, I mean, these promises, I think, are made to, to, because they say what they want people to believe. Here in the community, we've had AMs, MPs, old Lemby Oakwick used to be our MP. He went to head office in London. We had a big petition, everybody signed it. Nothing has ever come to anything. For 1916, it would be all right, but for 2016, it's, it's pretty poor, really. It isn't just households that have been suffering. It's restricting business as well. In a, in a very rural area like Powys, you know, Mid Wales in, in total, it's really restricting business development, which will hold the whole economy back. Most third world countries have decent broadband. They have decent mobile coverage. It's not as though we can move an outdoor centre to an urban area. Adrian runs this outdoor centre from the village. He relies on an unreliable, slow and expensive satellite internet connection to just send emails. And he's afraid this right to broadband might not mean that much. This universal service, they're now talking about, well, you've got to request it. It then might still be two or three years. If it's above a certain amount, you're then going to have to pay for it still. Um, so they're actually backing away from it. They're completely backing away from it. We, we at Countryside Alliance believe that having a decent broadband line is almost as important to people as having electricity, gas, etc. And there's no way that it would be acceptable for you to have a subpar um, gas um, or electricity service. There are also concerns that the speed guaranteed might be unacceptably slow. So while now offline parts of Britain might win 10 megabytes per second connections, some of the world's most connected cities are trying now to roll out networks of 10 gigabytes per second. That's a thousand times quicker. So having an internet connection is great, but if it's too slow, rural digital business and the UK economy as a whole will still be held back. We should be able to have this you know, live in this stunningly beautiful countryside, but still be able to access the same services as Joe Bloggs down the road in Shropshire. So we could still be some way from broadband being honoured alongside water, gas and electricity as the fourth utility. For RT UK in Powys, Wales, I'm Harry Fear.